Albuquerque landlord responds to questions about application fees, pet fees, and income and credit checks. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's a piece that was written by a landlord in response to all of the nonsense that they've been proposing in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, these proposals, they, they aren't anything new to landlords throughout the entire country, okay? They're proposing the same garbage everywhere, okay? Here in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, in Kansas City, where I also invest, all over the place, okay? So they're talking about, hey, you know, these these application fees, they're, they're, they're just not fair to tenants. Oh, uh, you know, you guys charging pet rent, that isn't fair. Oh, uh, you know, uh, doing criminal checks and background checks, that isn't right. Well, guess what, okay? I've explained many times over that these things are absolutely necessary to be able to run our businesses in the way that we see fit, okay? Put the best tenants possible in our properties and receive the least amount of problems. But people, they just don't understand that, okay? They think that we're just being evil for no good reason. No, there is a very good reason these rules and these you know, things that we do are done the way that they are done. And this landlord in this article does a much better job of explaining it than I can. So I'm going to go over this article in just a moment. But before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, okay? What do you think of these pet fees? What do you think of these, you know, applicate, you know, the, the proposals to get, make it so that uh, you can no longer charge pet rent, okay? What do you think of that sort of thing? What do you think of things saying, hey, we should limit how much application fees are accepted. You know, I, I know how much it costs to actually screen a tenant and how much it costs to put a new tenant into each one of my units when they become empty. So, you know, I, I don't believe that any landlord, their profit center is a whole bunch of application fees. That's a, that's a garbage lie that a whole bunch of pro-tenant activists made up. So, you know, I, I, I just, I, I'm going to let you know exactly what I think. I agree with almost 100% of everything that's in this. So let's get into it. This article is coming from the AlbuquerqueJournal.com and it says, proposed tenant injury ordinance will make things worse. Yep. And like I've said, they only seem to, you know, every year they seem to be passing more and more laws. You know, oh, we got to protect these tenants from all these bad landlords. And I, I keep pointing out the fact that 99% of landlords are already doing everything they're supposed to be doing. But those same 99% are the ones who are going to suffer under all these new laws. While, you know, the bad landlords, they just don't care about these laws. Okay, so let's get into the article and see what it says. Proposed renter protection legislation by Albuquerque City Councilor Tammy Feibelkorn would do the opposite of what she thinks it will do. Her proposal represents a fundamental misunderstanding of the industry. And now, now they go straight into it, okay? <laughs> Application fees. They really do cost landlords money. Between $35 and $50 per person to do a background check and a credit check. Of course, that is only the cost paid to the reporting agency. It doesn't include any of the landlord's time assessing the reports and the prospective tenant. Often, landlords charge prospective tenants for this as a defensive measure. When landlords pay the charges themselves, many will apply to multiple places, driving up costs for those landlords who pay it themselves. It is normal then for the landlord to pay for the checks, then approve applicants who then say they are not interested, wasting time and money. In addition, many applicants lie on their applications. They are less likely to lie if they are themselves are paying for the verification that will contradict the information they provide. And that is very, very true, okay? I'm speaking from personal experience here, right? You weed out the people who are just, you know, um, throwing applications out there when you put a fee, okay? You get a lot less applications, but you got a lot less of those, you know, people who are, you know, wishy-washy on whether they actually want to rent your unit or not, okay? And at the same time, it, it tells the people, hey, we're actually doing screening here, so if you have an eviction on your record, just go. Don't don't even waste your time because it's going to come up. If you have a really rocky credit history with a whole bunch of, you know, debts owed on it, 
don't even waste your time because it's going to come up, okay? And so when you have that that application fee on there, all of a sudden, you know, you're you're getting rid of a lot of the people who just waste your time. So the other thing is, yeah, it does cost a lot of money to do these tenant screenings, you know, and I've gone through a couple of different tenant screening uh, systems before. The one I used most recently was TransUnion Smart Move, right? And I believe for the uh, tenant screening I was doing was $40 for, you know, just one applicant, okay? So it could be $80 if you have two applicants who are going to be living in the same household, okay? So it, it is not cheap. So telling me that, oh, well, now you, you can, we're going to limit how much fees that you're going to charge, that's ridiculous, okay? Not only that, but there's a lot more than just running their credit and their background history, okay? I have to call employers to make sure that they still have a job. I have to call their former landlord to ask them if they were a decent tenant or not, okay? I, I want to know this sort of information because, hey, I wanna make sure the best applicant possible is in my property. So when I'm spending time and money and effort to do all of this, I expect to you know, at least be able to cover those costs. And you're telling landlords when you say, hey, these application fees are outrageous, you're telling us that our time isn't worth anything. Pet charges. Despite the fact that virtually every pet owner insists his or her pet is the perfect animal, never soiling the floor, never damaging anything, that just is not true. Not only do pets often damage things, damage that reaches into the thousands of dollars at times, but also they significantly increase normal wear. The soil carpet may not need immediate replacement, but will have a shorter lifetime. The torn up landscaping, even after repair, will never be the same. So we charge pet rent to cover some of those costs. Although that additional rent is, in some cases, more than the wear, more often than not, the wear exceeds the pet rent charges. In all, almost every case, the unit will require more cleaning work when the former tenant had a pet. And I, I, I can attest to that, okay? I have not had one time where, you know, especially in my units that have carpet in them, I have not had one time where I haven't had to at least, and I'm talking about at least, get, you know, the, you know, a lot of good cleaning done to get, to try to get that smell out of the carpet. Because, you know, once you have a pet in there, most likely you're going to have to just replace the carpet, okay? Because the pets, not only do they have their body odor, right, but sometimes they will, you know, uh, urinate or defecate on the carpet, you know, so you, you, they got stained, they, you know, it's, it's soaked into the pad. You just got to get it out, right? When we're talking about cats, you know, we've got the, the stench from the litter box. Sometimes they spray the walls. I mean, I have seen it, okay? It can be very, very bad. Not only that, but, you know, I own a dog myself, right? I've seen what my dog does to my house, okay? And like, for example, I have hardwood floors in my house. Well, there's scratches all over them. And, you know, if I didn't have a dog, those floors would be in perfect condition right now. So, yeah, and that doesn't even go into the pets who like to chew on things or scratch things. So, you know, if you're just a, a normal, you have a good pet and you think, oh, well, there is an additional wear and tear, you're just wrong. Okay, there's a lot more co cost of uh, wear and tear. There's a lot more cleaning costs involved when you own a pet. So, yeah, these, fet pe <laughs> Sorry. these pet fees and the pet rent are definitely necessary. Fees. Those fees are often not at all about making money or covering costs. They're about discouraging specific behaviors. We charge a dollar per cigarette butt for picking them out of the gravel. We much prefer there be none to pick up. We have a separate fee for having a pet without a prior pet agreement. We would much rather deal with the animal up front, ensuring the safety and tranquility of the neighborhood from vicious or loud animals. How could we possibly prove those costs as feeble corn demands? And yeah, if they're, they're asking you to prove the cost, it, it, it's very difficult, okay? So when you have to pull a whole bunch of cigarette butts out of the gravel in your landscaping, well, I mean, that's gonna take, that's gonna take a lot of time and you're gonna have to pay somebody to do it. So that's why we charge a fee like that, okay? I, I personally, I don't charge that because I don't allow smoking on my property and I would have the tenant clean it up or I'm gonna take from their security deposit, okay? So let me continue. <clears throat> Income and credit score. Nothing is fixed in stone, yet Feeblecorn demands it be so. 
Sometimes we will approve a lower credit score when there is a reasonable explanation and evidence that the prospective tenant has dealt with the issues. Sometimes a parent will guarantee a payment or even make the payment even though the parent is not a tenant. This proposal will injure those she would want to help. Yeah, so if you're telling me that I can no longer look at uh, income and credit score, then you're basically taking away my ability to put the best tenant into my property and I am going to suffer a loss when I have put a tenant in there who is unable to pay, okay? That is a huge, huge issue, especially the income part, right? So I, I don't, you know, like, like, I, like the author said, right? There is some flexibility when we're coming to credit scores. I, mean, I recently put a tenant into one of my units who has a score under 600, right? But the tenant has a very high income and right their their credit problems are years in the past but still not off of their record yet so that is why their credit is so low right now so you know i'm, I'm giving them a chance if i hope things work out but you know i took i decided to take that risk myself and a lot of landlords we just want it to be left up to us to decide who the best tenant is to go in our property so yeah i i agree with all of this stuff that this uh landlord and the author of this article is saying okay and these proposals that are you know being put out there by uh you know the city of albuquerque or their city council members they are nothing new right and they're not surprising and i expect this sort of thing to be happening all over the country like i said i've seen stuff like this here in omaha nebraska